Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick overview of the different parts of electric bikes, and really a lot of it is, is the parts of traditional bikes, okay? So I'm just going to kind of start off and name the different, different parts here, um, starting off with the frame. That's this kind of aluminum structure that everything's connected to. What we have here is the head tube, okay? That's a tube that, um, that the steering column goes through that connects to the fork. This happens to be a suspension fork with remote lockout, meaning that you can, uh, you can activate and kind of stiffen it up, or you can release it without having to reach down. So that's kind of a performance upgrade. You've got the stem here. Sometimes these are adjustable, so you can change the angle if you need to, to kind of change the ergonomics depending on, on the fit and, and your preference. We have the handlebar. This one's pretty straight, pretty aggressive, and pretty wide too, kind of like a race car, you know, it's very precision oriented. Some handlebars sweep up, so that you don't have to lean far forward. They, they let you kind of have this heads up point of view while you're cruising around. Um, others have drops, so you can get really, really aggressive. It's more like a road bike. So, then we have the grips here. These are sort of semi-ergonomic, which is pretty cool. They make, they kind of relax your wrist a little bit more when you're, when you're holding them. We've got the brake levers, and these ones actually have little rubber nubs on them because uh, it's a little bit of a higher performance bike, and in Europe that's a requirement for, for that. We've got a light up here, which is kind of cool, a bell, and then we've got the trigger shifters, okay? Sometimes they're mounted up here, so you'd kind of position your hand like this. Other times it's a, it's a grip shifter kind of thing. In this case, there's more like triggers. And those pull a cable that moves this back here. This is called the derailleur. Okay, so it kind of moves in and out, and it guides this chain along this cog set. So you can change the position of the chain uh, and, and basically make it easier or, or more difficult to pedal, and that can kind of change your speed and make it easier or more difficult to climb. Okay, so back up here, this is the top tube. Sometimes there is no top tube on an electric bike, and that's the case over here with these two energy cycles. See, it's all just combined into this one tube. It's kind of a down tube, I guess is what you would, what you would call it. And you can see that right here. This is the down tube. This is a more traditional, what they call a diamond frame, because it kind of looks like a you know, triangle, kind of a diamond. Some of the fancier electric bikes, like this Specialized Turbo, they have the battery integrated right into that down tube that keeps the weight super low, and it kind of spreads it out evenly across the frame. It helps it blend in, which is really nice. Um, that's the case here with this Energy Excursion 2.0. Got an integrated battery right there in the down tubes, really well hidden. And then on this bike, we've got more of a conventional, still well mounted, you know, good weight distribution, but you can clearly see the battery. Okay, and other bikes hang them off the back, which is, you know, that's not really ideal because then the bike's a little bit more squirrely and your, your weight, uh, you know, there's more propensity for it to tip over and kind of get broken. This is the seat tube. It's a tube that the seat post slides up and down in. You can kind of adjust that to get the right seating position for ergonomics. This is the saddle that you sit on. They come in a bunch of different styles. Some of them are fat and really comfortable. This one's a little bit more aggressive, and by being narrow right here, your legs can, can move across this without kind of scuffing and getting a rash. Here are the saddle rails. You can actually adjust those frontwards to backwards for a better ergonomic fit. And then we've got the seat stays. So that's this pair of sort of tubes on the back and they connect down here to the chain stays. So the chain stays are near the chain, seat stays are near the seat. And in this case, we've got a lot of different mounting options on this, the seat stays. You can see there's a couple of uh, threaded eyelets or brazons or bosses right here. You could put a rack on this bike. You know, there's, there's more threaded eyelets here so you could connect those two. You could put on a fender right there. There's another um, brazon, so pretty cool stuff. And then the chainstay, of course, it's just, it's kind of completing that triangle for strength. And a lot of times they have like a little sort of a slap guard right here because this chain can bounce up and down and kind of chip that. So that's kind of a neat thing. Other electric bikes will have um, sort of a wrapper, maybe like a neoprene thing to kind of hide the cables and double as uh, a, a slap guard. Up here, we have the front chain ring. 
Now you could have several chain rings on the front and a second derailleur, just like we had back here. But I found that a lot of electric bikes, you know, they just, they opt for like an 11 speed cassette, like we see here, there's plenty of gears and then nothing up front because it's, it allows the chain to be a little bit shorter. There's less mechanical complexity. Um, and, and they're able to do something like have this little chain guide. See how that's gonna keep the chain from hopefully not flopping off. And then we've got a bash guard on the other side. That's this aluminum plate that keeps, that kind of protects those teeth if you come into contact with a log or with a curb while you're riding so you know, it doesn't get broken, doesn't get messed up. So back here we have the rear wheel. This is called the wheel set. Sort of this, in this case, aluminum. We've got the spokes that connect it to the hub. And in this case, it's a hub motor. And in the front, we just have a traditional non-motorized hub, just a place for all those spokes to connect. And spokes are cool because they're, you know, they kind of bend and flex and they keep it really lightweight, but they also sort of improve the ride quality compared to if this was just a big steel, you know, like on a car, like a, a hub on a car. Um, so that's neat. And we got the, the tire going around. On the inside of this tire, there's an inner tube and this is the valve for filling it. So, you know, you can kind of take this off. This is called a Presta valve. You have to twist this a little bit and then you can you know fit a pump to it and fill it up a lot of times tires will have sort of a rating for for pressure on them it says pressured 50 to 75 psi pounds per square inch so that's really cool and they'll also have the size of the tire so 700 by 47 c um, 700 that's about equivalent to a little bit more than 28 inches being a little bit wider this this wheel is going to have a little bit more momentum and it's going to span cracks and and gaps instead of falling into it like a smaller wheel like we see over here this is 20 inch wheel and uh, you know it's it's a little bit more nimble it brings the whole bike down but it's not going to be maybe as comfortable and so again we can kind of see here 20 by 1.75 on this one we've got the spokes We've got the suspension fork. This one actually has fenders mounted to it, which is really cool. And instead of having a chain and a cassette and all that, this bike actually has something called a shaft drive. Okay, so there's actually like a drive system built right into this, this metal bar and it sort of doubles as a chain stay and it keeps it extra clean. It means you don't have to worry about the chain falling off. It's a really neat design, but it is heavier. And in this case, there's only one speed. Okay, so you can imagine going from zero miles per hour up to 20 miles per hour, you start pedaling and you're real slow at zero. And by the time you hit 20, your pedals are just going nonstop with a bike like this or one with a seven speed cassette, you can change gears and, you, and then you don't have to pedal so quickly. So again, this is kind of a unique frame here. You don't have seat stays, you don't have chain stays, you just have this big bar that goes all the way across. Uh, and that's cool, you know, it works out, but I find that, that it's not quite as stiff um, and it tends to weigh a little bit more. You know, this is a 61 pound bike, whereas uh, many other electric bikes with similar setup would be in the 50 pound range. Um, and a lot of that's because of the frame. And this also has a larger battery, so that's, that's worth noting. And then we want to talk about, um, you know, the pedal cranks here. That's the crank arm. And then we have the pedal with reflectors on it. Got a nice kickstand down here and more fenders. This one also has remote lockout on the suspension, which is kind of cool and it has a preload adjustment. This more basic suspension fork over here, it has a lot less travel right there and uh, it only has preload adjustment and, and that just sort of like tightens the spring in there. So it's like, how, how tight do you want it? Do you want it to be really loose and kind of bouncy or do you want it to kind of be like a little bit faster and a little tighter? Uh, so that's cool. There's a lot of adjustability in the higher end suspension forks. As I was mentioning earlier, some, some stems have that sort of adjustable angle and that this is a good example of, of that right here. Now we've got a button pad, a remote button pad on this bike that lets you easily adjust basically how the bike is performing. And we've got our throttle over here with a nice big display in the middle. So that sort of makes up your cockpit on the bike. And a lot of these displays are backlit. They're designed to be a little bit larger like this to be easy to read. And some of them swivel, others even come off and that can help you prevent wear just from the sun, from rain or snow. So that's a, that's a pretty good um, option. Here's more semi-ergonomic grips. And here's an example of a, a larger saddle and a seat post suspension shock. So that's cool, you know, there are full suspension electric bikes, but uh, you know, they tend to be more expensive. And if you have a hub motor, remember there's the, kind of that 
increased uh, increased weight on the wheel unsprung weight meaning that you know is it weight that's sprung that's on the frame that the springs are supporting or is it weight that's unsprung meaning that it's going to kind of cause more movement and and wear and energy being forced into the suspension so you don't want unsprung weight but most electric bikes like all of these are hard tails so you know i guess one of my favorite you know drive systems is the mid drive because you can do quick release on the wheels a lot of times you can um you know benefit from that that cassette in the back and you don't have to worry about unsprung weight so for off-roading that that would be worth considering this is an eight fun mid drive but there's also bosch impulse 2 and you know a few others out there and earlier I was talking about um, tires and tubes. These are 26 inch tires. And you'll notice that the valve is a little bit different. It's a little bit larger, kind of looks like one on a car. So that's called a Schrader valve. Whereas over there with the Specialized Turbo, that's a Presta valve. So just a little bit different. There are a lot of pumps that can do either. You know, the, the pump stem where you're kind of like fitting it onto the tire tube, it's adjustable and it has more range. Um, so that's worth kind of keeping in mind if you're buying a bike and looking at buying some some accessories for it. And then, of course, the brakes. So we, we have the brake levers up there. And then in, in these cases, we're looking at disc brakes all across. So we've got a big disc back here with a kind of a caliper setup that pinches that disc, just like in a car, and that's how you stop. A lot of disc brakes are set up to be mechanical, meaning that there's just a wire in there and kind of see if we follow it down here see the wire coming out then if i squeeze this you can see it moving but other setups like this one over here they have hydraulic disc brakes so it's got it's got hydraulic fluid in here and it's really smooth and basically it's just sort of squeezing that fluid and that's what's what's causing it to uh, pinch those calipers so very cool but potentially harder to or more difficult to to service yourself you might have to go to a shop or something to get that get that um, dealt with and then of course there's some nice different little upgrades like we've got a through axle on this bike 12 millimeter through axle that, that just means instead of like a little skewer just a, a thin uh, piece of metal this one's a little bit larger so a larger diameter and that's going to make it more rigid and just kind of like sturdier at high speed it's going to make it easier to kind of line the wheel up and stuff when you're changing a flat that kind of thing and then we've also got Kind of a nice upgraded system right here this pass through on the front front spot sprocket and this whole area here this this is the bottom bracket within here so you can actually kind of unscrew that and take off and, and replace pieces up here in the front because it's basically another axle just like we have an axle at the back an axle at the front we have the bottom bracket and these motor systems these mid drives they actually fit like right on and kind of you know replace your bottom bracket essentially i mean they, they aren't replacing anything they're just they're coming on and they're fitting directly to the bottom bracket and again sort of connecting to to that frame and the chain so you can still pedal backwards but as soon as you start pedaling it's pulling that chain and as soon as the motor kicks in you're pulling that chain so that's that's an interesting interesting way to go and in in this case it's sort of an add-on where you're you're like connecting to an existing frame but in the case of like the Bosch system or impulse 2 it's replacing this whole thing so the bike frame just comes down here and at the bottom of the seat tube you've just got a plate and that's where you mount the whole motor system and this one it's more like an aftermarket thing where you just you kind of fit it on to the existing bottom bracket so yeah you know costs less to do it this way but it's not quite as seamless it doesn't have shift detection and shift detection is basically you know as you are changing gears is the motor being a mid-drive going to notice is it going to respond and relax a little bit so that you don't have grinding happening you don't have the chain being overly stressed i know i went a little bit a little bit more in depth there with some of the systems but i wanted to describe how they work um, and, and, you know, really why they matter on different types of bikes, why a mid-drive might be suitable for one application versus a folding bike, you know, super small, lightweight motor versus something like, you know, the Specialized Turbo that has this bigger, gearless, smooth, quiet, fast motor. There's, there's just an incredible range and diversity of electric bikes. And, you know, if you'd like to learn more, I'm going to be doing more primers. And I'll see you back at, at the site, electricbikereview.com. Ride safe.